Could there have been life on Mars? That is the age-old question. Well, we might finally have an answer. A new discovery made by NASA's Perseverance rover says yes. Mm, a sample taken from an ancient river channel shows potential biosignatures, which could suggest ancient signs of life. Now, this discovery is one of the best pieces of evidence to date. So what does, does it all mean moving forward? Joining us now is science communication specialist Alexandra Doten, or as you probably know her and remember from our show, Astro Alexandra. She's on TikTok here, and we, uh, we have talked to you before in studio. Good to have you back in here. Thanks Thank you for, for having us. me. I'm so excited to be here. All right, so we've got to jump right into this news first about mm -hmm. Mars. It, the discovery is huge. Um, explain what exactly was found in terms of you know, life, previous life on Mars. Yeah, absolutely. So what we're looking at is the Mars Perseverance rover, which goes around Mars and drills down and takes samples of rocks. And it also takes a lot of images. And what it found were these really peculiar spots on a rock by an ancient riverbed. So we know that this area used to have running water. And what we know about water on Earth is that where there's water, there is oftentimes life. So when it found these peculiar spots, they said, what could this be? And they released this data to the public immediately last year. And for the last year, these scientists have been trying to figure out what these spots could be. And after a year, NASA finally announced, we can't come up with anything other than ancient microbes on Mars that potentially used the organic compounds in this rock as an energy source. So it could indicate that a very long time ago on Mars, there was very small life. Wow. And that, that's a big deal, right? Huge. It would be the first evidence, solid evidence of aliens, because even tiny, tiny life is aliens. Well, exactly. Life of some form. We're not mm -hmm. you know, necessarily talking people, but right. life, any kind of life. It looks like mold to me. I mean, that was my <laughs> first impression then and still now. So mold would be life. Models we like. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's incredibly exciting. Yeah. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it couldn't be anything else. Right. There are other things that could create similar spots. Um, sustained extremely high temperatures or acidic reactions or binding by organic compounds, but we don't see any of that there. So by process of elimination, we're kind of left with ancient life. microbial life. <laughs> So, okay, we've got that information now. How are scientists going to use that going forward to maybe look for more evidence of life? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, honestly, the next step would probably be a Mars sample return mission. So, like I mentioned, it's been collecting all of these samples and leaving them all around Mars. So now we just have to go get them mm -hmm. right. so we can bring them back and study what it could be. And that, that's really the next step. But these rovers have incredibly advanced technology. So now that they know what to look for even more... Maybe we can find even more interesting rocks. Well, exactly. Collect them all. The next mission, whether it's manned or unmanned, but going back to get them would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of exploring, though, let's talk about the James Webb. Please. Telescope. I mean, <laughs> every single image is more extraordinary than the last. Mm -hmm. so, some new stunning images just came in. Talk about what we're seeing here. It's, it's basically 3,000 light years away, but we're able to visualize it. I mean, look at this. It's just incredible. So what we're looking at here is the Butterfly Nebula. So this is a planetary nebula, which is a misleading name. It's not a planet. It's a star that's expelling its mass at the end of its life. So this is a dying star, and it's just getting rid of everything. And we've had images of this planetary nebula before. But what the James Webb Space Telescope is able to do is it's able to look through dust in ways that other telescopes cannot because it uses infrared light. So in the center, you can see this torus of dust. And inside of there is this dying, exploding star. And James Webb was able to pierce through it and really see it. And so it comes out these amazing, almost abstract images of, of really the end of a star's life. And this is what our sun is going to do someday. Wow. Wow, mm -hmm. right? It's incredible. And so these are real. Yes. Uh, the, the images, though, they've been added, the color at least, yes. right? So how do we know those colors are, are accurate? So they are accurate in if we could see infrared light, but mm. we cannot. Mm. 
Um, the, you know, the light spectrum is incredibly large, and we can only see a small sliver of it. We can see visible light. James Webb Space Telescope uses infrared light, which is longer wavelengths. So these are, this light has been traveling through space and stretching with space. So if we were to shift our eyes to those wavelengths, mm. this is more realistic to what we would see. So what it does is it takes these images in multiple different filters, a red filter, a green filter, a blue filter, and looks at these wavelengths. And if something's bright in the blue filter, we can kind of figure out what color it is. There are some scenarios where things are colored differently for scientific purposes. If there are two elements that are very similar color-wise, then we can change something. For scientific data, we can see where that molecule yeah. is popping up. But it is accurate. It, it's all for science. Yes. This is phenomenal. Astra Alexander, thank you so much for coming in and explaining this all so well.